Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread, where it's food as it should be. It's where I go to begin my day. There's nothing like that first cup of coffee in the morning. It's also where I go to meet up with friends, and sometimes I even run into a book club. Panera is the perfect place to host a meeting. Everyone's happy with their extensive menu, from the delicious soups and salads to the sandwiches and flatbreads. And don't forget the takeout. The summer months are coming, and who wants to cook? You can order ahead, and your dinner will be waiting for you. That's all at your local Panera Bread. And now, enjoy the show. So it's a double fun day. It's pub day for one of my favorite books, brand new, out today, The Windfall by Diksha Basu. It's also a debut novel, which is my other very, very favorite thing to talk about and share with the Reading with Robin audience. Diksha is a writer and an occasional actor. She's originally from New Delhi, India, holds an MFA in creative writing from Columbia University, and now divides her time between New York City and Mumbai. Welcome to Reading with Robin, Diksha. Thank you so much, Robin. It's such a pleasure to be here. I am thrilled to have you on. I think I read this book, The Windfall, which is just out today. I think it was maybe December or so, which is a really long time ago. Now that we're here in summer, I just was immediately drawn to the whole thing. It is funny, charming, smart, clever, everything I love in a book, and it's got a fabulous cover. So did you love the cover? Did you go? This was so perfect right from the start. I think it spoke to all of us. There were hardly any changes made to it. Oh, love it. This will jump off the shelves and into the reader's hands. It's it's really, uh, it, I love sharing a debut that I am so attached to. And I think we've been tweeting. I think it's when I first read it, maybe we were tweeting. You can find Diksha right at the, well, you can find her everywhere, right? It's pub day. Everything's, <laughs> it's all out there. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and on her website, which is what's your website? Dikshabasu.com. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Dikshabasu.com. And congratulations on your daughter. More the Thank book's you. great, but the baby. I mean, so book and baby, and that seems to happen often. What was that Does process it? like? Yes. Oh, always. Yeah. Usually it's baby, book, and somebody's moving. Yeah. Usually like that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, that's comforting. No, when I found out I was pregnant and the baby was going to be born two (laughs) months before the book hit shelves, my husband and I said we had either timed it really well or really badly. (laughs) And right now, exactly eight weeks into it, we're not too sure which one it is, but I will say that both the book and the baby help alleviate some of the anxiety about the other. It must, right? Because how much much energy can you put into anxiety when you've got – a baby, oh my goodness, she's so beautiful. I was looking at pictures, and I mean, oh, you. your book's beautiful too, but your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is. I, I, As I'm talking to you, I'm thinking of all the authors I've known through the years where this has been the case. And yeah, it just seems to be, I mean, what a lot of joy to celebrate all at once. And one day, she'll she'll hear the story about coming two months before the book and book tour and all of that. So yeah just makes it almost you know just more fun i just like more i think so right i mean and your book is about a family and it's about all of those connections and what family means and what obligations or carrying on tradition and all of this so what does your family think of the book firstly and how is it being received you know back home and and everywhere The home, the definition of home keeps changing, actually. My family right now, for the first time in about 20 years, we're all in the same city. We're all living in New York uh, next few months, so which is wonderful. Uh, My parents have always been very supportive of my work, and I think they were so thrilled that I was focusing more of my career on writing than acting. Acting was the one career choice no one really was too thrilled about. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. I'm so happy that I... (laughs) That I'm acting, they've been very supportive. My mother, in particular, has read multiple drafts of the book, mm-hmm. um, and they've just really been very nice and enjoyed the book. And if they have recognized some character traits of theirs <laughs> that I've borrowed along the way, they certainly haven't complained about it. 
Well, you know, that's that's how you honor family and friends, really. What better, depending on who you modeled after whom, I should say, but the characters are all so charming and quirky, and it's just like the best of what I love about reading this book. I mean, I did. I enjoyed it so much, and I'm speaking with debut novelist Dick Shabasu. The Windfall is out. You will not miss this gorgeous cover when you're out and about with this. It's just colorful, and, and it's got this car with... Um, luggage strapped to the top, which is not how the family really moves, but it's you know it just sort of exemplifies a lot of the certainly a lot of the storyline, and it it just makes sense. And it's uh, if it hadn't been sent to me and I was out about shopping, I still would have picked it up because this is one of those even without reading what it was about. And then of course I'd really want it. So talk a little bit about the story and how, you know what is the story you want to tell? What do you want your readers to know? You know, so the story is about a family that comes into a large sum of money, seemingly overnight, and they decide to make the move from their very middle-class New Delhi neighborhood, a very average neighborhood, across the city, sort of across class lines, to the posh suburb of Gurgaon. And at that point, it's their attempts to keep up with the neighbors and to fit into the new social norms that they find themselves surrounded by. And even though in this book, Delhi is a very crucial character. The city itself takes on a very large role. But I think and I hope that the story itself is more universal than that, and the story goes beyond not just cities but countries and speaks more to a global sort of feeling of insecurity or nervousness that I think we all go through at some point or the other, and also the humor of it, the humor of not fitting in and trying to fit in and hoping to fit in, and how much pressure all of us in different societies across the board are concerned with what our neighbors think of us and what we think of them, and how much that plays into our day-to-day lives. I, well, I often wonder sort of what I would want in life if I had no idea what anybody else wanted. Mm. And I think that wow. is something That's we all think about. That's very interesting, and because uh, this book transcends it all because they are there as you said such universal themes and in reading it certainly my own family story or where we come from or what was expected of the children and the generations and what the parents work so hard for and all that it's it's all the same you know and really deciding what we want for ourselves and where how we want to sort of project our what we want people to think of us. And I was thinking of those yoga pants that get thrown off the balcony. <laughs> I mean, so funny because you, where the where the family lives initially, everybody is so close together, you know, sort of like the tenements of the Lower East Side or something like right. this. You know, it's all very familiar. And what the neighbors think is just one of, you know, that is just always funny, <laughs> you know, and just what you want them to see and so also the sense of coming into a large sum of money and I mean earning a large sum of money it doesn't just um, fall out of the sky and they you know not being too showy or not having you know being different or being perceived as you know so there's so many tricky situations there and I just love this family I mean I really so connected to this book and this family and, and the story so which which were some of the parts that you did slightly lift from from your own community, family? Well, you know, very little because I'm from an academic family. Both my parents and my brother, they're all professors. So mm-hmm. <laughs> huge sums of money don't fall upon academic families. That's <laughs> more. But I did grow up in New Delhi in the 1990s, which was soon after the Indian economy opened up. And you could sort of see this explosion of wealth mm-hmm. everywhere around you. It was very hard not to see that. And I grew up. I grew up surrounded by that. And um, you, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood, an average middle class neighborhood. And I saw how Delhi shifted in front of my eyes. And I didn't really register it then because I was hardly an adolescent at the time. Mm-hmm. But I guess, suppose in retrospect, it really stayed with me. And it continues to. The changes in India are so palpable and so evident now that I split my time and I'm back in now Mumbai, not Delhi, but. Mm-hmm. Every six months, I really you can see such visible differences that continue still today. Um, recently, Starbucks came in, uh, and all of a sudden, what used to be the local Indian coffee chain is gradually going out of business as Starbucks uh, takes over every neighborhood. That's a shame. Yeah, that's right. And then you see um, the the uh, which cars are coming in are changing. It goes for you know 
there used to be more tax restrictions on which international car brands were able to manufacture and sell in India, and that's changing, and those laws are lifting. So different brand names are coming in, different stores are coming in, all of a sudden you've got a Zara all over the, in every big city. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I, as happens with globalization, there's a certain uniformity coming in that didn't exist before, and I've been n- noticing that subconsciously and now much more consciously, really since the early 90s. So when you come back and forth, and it is, and you do go back and forth every six months, is that? Uh, even more so. Right I mean, now, yeah. um, actually, before we had the baby, we were going back and forth every two months. Oh My wow! My husband's career is largely in Bombay, but now we're doing longer stretches in each city. Yeah, so then it is really you go, you come back and you say, wait, that wasn't there or what right. happened to, yeah. And, that, you know, it's just so impossible to stop change once, you know, once it sort of is it's out there and people want more and, and companies come in and all of that and you just sort of think about the way things were. And you talk about the cars and the family at the center of this book gets, he gets a new car, right? Is it, um yes. Does he get it? Yes. Is it Ja? Mr. Ja? Mr. Ja, yeah. Mr. Ja. He's so charming. I love, love that. Love his wife and the neighbors. And when they do move, they move uh, next door. Just the, the the idea of what, again, what they want to project to their neighbors and just like the subtleties of what's going on in the neighborhood and how they think they're being perceived. There is just so much um, to just connect with. The humor, I, I think that's the thing. One of the things that I love the most is like a heartfelt, funny, honest look at you know what you know what what's going on with these with the families and the changes. But it's it's just charming. I don't know. It's just I can't say enough about it. I just really you're making love. my day, Robin. Thank you. Oh. It's such a nerve-wracking day, and this is just such a fantastic thing to hear. Oh, it's my pleasure, and I really love. I mean, there's nothing I love more than reading a book, and and it was like I said, so long ago, six months or so ago, and thinking, you know, I get to share this book in June, and here we are, and it's pub day, and everybody will be talking about this, and I'll be sharing copies with the Reading with Robin audience, and I'm really excited, and I hope at some point you'll come up to Rhode Island. I I have a monthly reading series in Providence, and it's uh, been incredibly well received, and many authors have have done the New York to Providence run so when you're right. you're ready to travel or you know you would like to come i would love to have you come come read it would be a real treat and bring your baby <laughs> yeah, i will i think we're getting we're getting ready to take out into the world <laughs> so yeah what's going on what's book tour like where are you going to be you know, fortunately, uh, quite minimal because my publishers have been so kind about recognizing that it might be a little difficult for me sure. to travel with the newborn. So I'm only doing events in New York City and Washington, D.C. at the moment, and mm-hmm. they've done a big media push for me from New York. So that's great. I'm managing to stay pretty local. Good. Well, that's great. And then there's always, you know, the paperback. So exactly. <laughs> Not to rush things too much, Diksha. I sort of, I sort of have that sense. I'm like planning it all out, but we'll get you here at some point. And I'm speaking. You must, and I think actually yes. Crown already has a paperback pub date. So it was- oh, really? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Nothing stays in the moment. I mean, and you know, right. with with a child, you know, you really want to do that because I mean, it all goes so fast. Here you are, you know, you've got the paperback, and and she's you know older, but there is a sense of staying. <laughs> staying in the moment and just enjoying it except for we have to plan so i'll i'll look forward to figuring that out and um uh, and sharing this with with so many people because there's nothing like i mean don't you love putting a book in someone's hands and saying you're going to love this book absolutely it's such a satisfying feeling it, so you must be a big reader i am yes absolutely what's on your list or what do you think okay now i've got this little girl so you know reading time gets a little bit you know, shuffled around, but do you have books that you really want to get to over the summer or that are sitting there waiting for you? So many. My uh, to my to read list just is getting larger and larger <laughs> as I keep sort of realizing I'm not going to be able to read as much as I was, and I'm trying desperately to find time. You get my New Yorker reading list cuts off exactly on the week that the baby was born. <laughs> so that's where my reading currently is. Um, yeah, there's so much great stuff coming out, actually. I'm, I know that you just did an event with, uh, with um, Angelica Baker on the little, our little racket. Exactly. Oh, so I'm so excited. excited to read that. Yeah, that's a really good one. And that's the thing, too. I mean, we always want to just be reading the things that we know we're going to really be excited about. 
because there's not enough time, right? But that's right, the good exactly. thing. When you get to these books, you'll know which ones people are really buzzing about, and you'll only get the ones that are, are worthy of your time, which the windfall for everybody who's tuning in and listening and wanting to know what to be reading this summer, do not miss the windfall. It's out today. It's by Diksha Basu. You can visit her site at dikshabasu.com. Find her on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I often thought, what if all the social media were around when my children were little? And I can't even imagine. So how do you sort of balance that? What to share, what not to share, and you know how much time to spend on social media, especially with the new book out. I spend more time than I ought to, but I don't. I've been <laughs> trying to not post pictures of my daughters on Twitter and Instagram because they're such public platforms, and I just yes. feel comfortable doing that yet. So, I've, but I haven't been able to resist. I know you saw earlier a picture of her little hand. Oh my God, that little <laughs> on the hand! On back of her head. Oh. Those I haven't been able to resist. Oh, but you I've can't. been trying not to put pictures of her face up. Yes. Oh no, it's very hard. It really is. I I really don't know how I would have done anything, really gotten through school, any of it. Right. It, it really can be such a time a time commitment, but it's, it, can. Well, it, it really can. And then you can't sort of help it. And then a lot of your friends have books out, I know, and right. and you're doing events. I forget who I saw. You, there was a great piece, or it was a, an event with Lisa Ko, and I forget which Oh, others. that's the new Poets and Writers issue that they've listed. Uh, they've sort of introducing five debut novelists this uh this summer, and I have the good fortune of Gary Steingart introducing me for that magazine for the issue. Uh, you gotta love Gary; he's everywhere. Yeah. He l- so, but social a- media is also so useful. I mean, it's also how right now when I'm so strapped for time, the way I'm picking up news is with sort of you know, or even staying up to date on what books are coming out yeah. through these tidbits on the, within 140 characters. So I'm also relying on it while I recognize it wastes a lot of time as well. <laughs> I know it, it is in, interesting to reconcile the two but you know twitter not always a bad thing yeah gary steingart writes the funniest novel to come out of india in years dick shabasu's the windfall is a timely snapshot of delhi families on their way up down and sideways i love gary's stuff yeah he's i'm very, so lucky to have his support very funny and it is very true and um and it's out today and it's very very exciting but yeah it's it is really hard to keep up with all of that but that is where I think, um, depending on who you're following and what you're reading, it does sort of break things down to, oh, okay, I know this is happening, you know, this is important, this sort of thing, because there's so much information and it's constant, you know, it really, it's just, it's just absolutely overwhelming. So back to the book, talk about some of the other characters, the son, um, Mr. and Mrs. Jha's son, and um, the neighbor, and the the woman, I forget her name at the moment, Mrs. who... Ray. Mrs. Ray, the widow? Yes, I love that. Oh, this is a charming love story. Yeah, so talk about some of the characters that we'll meet in the windfall. Yeah, so um, Mrs. Ray is actually a relatively young widow, and she's um, trying to make her way in a world in which women are often defined in relation to the men that they are around, be it their mm-hmm. fathers or their husbands or their sons. And she suddenly finds herself in a position in her 40s where she has none of those. She has no father, no husband, no son. Uh, but she's very happy. She lives a very full life. And a lot of times people don't want to see someone who doesn't have what they assume are markers of happiness be happy. Mm. But she still chooses to be happy. And I love her character. I really think that all of us, uh, women, you know, it's in so many ways, so many parts of the world are regressing when it comes to women's rights and yeah. what women um, can and cannot do. And I think it's all the more reason to have women, both in literature and in real life, who are paving their own way and who are not apologizing for the simple act of happiness. Right. And that's what she represents to me, while also still have, being funny and being lighthearted and just not being bogged down by the title of widow, which yeah, is what I this... wanted her to be. Because that's the thing when you see you see that somebody's a widow and she is relatively young, so there becomes this immediate idea of what their life would be or should be, and she lives with such joy and lightness, and uh, just seems like the kind of person I would want to know. So I really enjoy 
I really enjoyed reading about her, and her storyline was really fun to write. Do you do you write about do you sort of give the characters their own space, or you write in a linear fashion? What is your process like? You know, I don't even know if it's going to be an ongoing process since this is just the start, but this book started as a collection of short stories that were very character-driven. Oh, and, I did and, not know that. Cool. Working, yeah, and so that was actually my MFA thesis at Columbia was uh, the collection of short stories, and it had this sort of very loosely braided connection of the child's moving neighborhoods was what was tying the stories together. Mm-hmm. So they were very character-driven. And then as I started working and after I finished at Columbia and I started working with my agent, I started moving it towards a more cohesive novel. So that's how this book came about. And I really enjoyed the process of doing that. That allowed me to spend time with my characters and get to know them mm-hmm. on their own before I put them into the larger context of the narrative that I had chosen. And that propelled my story forward because by the time I came to a narrative-based space for the book, I already knew what my characters would do if I put them in any setting. So now I can sort of almost imagine them in a room with me on any given evening, and I would know what they would do. So I didn't have to force it on them by that point. I love that because that makes so much sense. I, you know, And I don't usually ask. It's interesting when I'm interviewing writers and I've been hosting this radio show for 15 years now and I rarely ask about that process but something about this book and these characters I'm not surprised because they are they're so real they are just um, so fully formed that this makes perfect sense okay so what would now I'm going to trick you up what would (laughs) the neighbor know the two ladies that jog down the street what would they do if they were on a plane and now Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love those two women, though. So I would love to imagine that. Maybe I can think of that next book. So funny. Where did they come from? And you know, and again, there's never any spoilers on reading with Robin. I'm speaking right. with the author of The Windfall, Dick Shabasu. The book is out just today, so this isn't book club. We're not going to be giving anything away. But yeah, where did those? They. I could just picture them if this were a movie, like what the what they would be wearing and like who right. you sort of slate for them. You know, every Delhi party, every every party. I mean, every city has its uh, has those two women in some incarnation <laughs> or the other, and mine just happened to be ones who I've seen at many Delhi evenings. Yeah, very, very funny. And I mean, can you? Is it something that, as a writer, you know, there are certain things that writers do or won't do, like go on Amazon and check where the book is, go on Goodreads and see what people are saying, you know, sort of cast the movie if it were, you know, who would who would produce it and how, you know. So are these things that you do, or you're or you're busy with your sweet little girl? Well, I don't know if you know, but it's actually already in development as a television show. I didn't know. Perfect. <laughs> I'm so excited. Breaking so I get news. To actually, sort of, yeah, so I get to actually imagine who I would and would not cast, but I'm not that's directing hol- it. But. <laughs> that's hilarious. Now, will you be doing any of the writing, or is, is are you I'm going to be involved in that way? consultant. Oh, cool. All right. So where is it? Now I have questions, Diksha. So where... <laughs> This is awesome. I'm so excited. Do you know where it's going to be or when or is this this is just new? It's you know, it's very early, so it's uh in development with Paramount Television in LA and Anonymous Content is the production house. Um wow. and they 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 they're co-creating it. There's a director named Shanali Bose who's a very talented director who splits her time between Delhi and Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. She's at the helm and it's still very early stages, so that's about all that's- I'll That's say about plenty. it right now, but it's it's in very good hands. I'll continue to haunt you offline. I'm so excited. This would be, I mean, I can totally see this. Oh, boy, this is very exciting news indeed. The Windfall is out today. It's by Diksha Basu. It is her debut novel. I'm very excited. Are you working on, on more? That's what happens. You know, you you have the baby. When are you going to have another one? You have a book. When are you going to have another one? <laughs> exactly. That's I what happens. my mother. <laughs> That's a universal thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Exactly, right? And so what do you and what are your hopes for these characters? We'll we'll wait on the new one. I'm already loving it, of course. But when when you finish with this and certainly because as you say you spend so much time with these characters, what do you hope for them? I you know, pick one of them and and sort of say what you hope for their future. 
any one of them. Oh, that's a terrific question, uh, because I'm not even sure I'm quite done with these characters yet. Oh, good. So, uh, you're asking questions I've, I, I still have to figure out in my head, but <laughs> oh, let's see. For uh, I think I'm going to have to talk about Mrs. Cha, because she's in many ways thrust into positions that she didn't necessarily choose. Mm-hmm. So I hope she comes to a place where she doesn't have to change very much regardless of her surroundings. Which is a really interesting point. This is not, you know, they're, this is a happy couple where they are, you know, and, and then they come into this large sum of money. So it's not as if they're aspiring to move or get out or, or any of that kind of thing. Right. And then you, which is what's so interesting and funny and heartwarming in, in much of the book in reading about this and thinking what must it be like for her. She's very happy about who she is. I'm, I'm excited to. I'm excited that you may not be finished with these characters. Yeah, and you know, also just changing uh, in, in a way that wouldn't necessarily get anyone sympathy or pity. I mean, becoming very wealthy doesn't inspire pity in others. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, change is change. And so also, like, you, you know, if you're not asking for it, but, of course, right, nobody's going to get out and say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear all this. But there are changes that happen that one wouldn't even imagine. And, you know, you, you, life goes off in another direction and making new friends and, you know, sort of keeping the traditions and the friends that you have all while knowing people are judging you in such a way, you know. And, and so it's really it's really kind of tricky. Yeah, no sympathy. No, right. <laughs> nobody's going to put up a go unfund me page for you or something, no. or something like that. So that isn't that isn't going to happen. Um, but people can go to dikshabasu dot com and find out where she'll be in the New York D C area. Are you reading at Politics and Prose? Is that where they're sending I am, you? Yes, on yeah, July twenty first. That's a fabulous place to be reading. So there's that, and at some point coming to Rhode Island to read at Point Street Reading Series. We won't pin you down just yet, but know that we would love to, yes, absolutely. Absolutely love, love to have you here. And usually people say, oh, my roommate is, you know, went to Brown and stayed there or something like that. There's always that. We'll we'll introduce you to some new people while you're here because there are so many fabulous readers, and the, the series has just taken on a life of its own. I've been is, following you online, and it really does sound like you have such a wonderful network and group of uh, really avid readers. I feel very lucky to be doing this with you. Thank you. Oh, it is such a treat. Again, I read the book like six months ago, and when I was looking through the schedule and I thought we were, you know, that I realized it was today that we were speaking, well, I realized it, during, you know, sooner. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that was such a long time ago. And and it's tricky, too, because when you read a book so far in advance and then you're doing an interview, you know, you sort of poke back through it. And I was, like, re-laughing about certain things, you know, in the book because it really was such a joy to read and I'm so thrilled to share it with the audience. And I will be talking about it. And, and I know it was – did I see Good Housekeeping? Did I just see that? Yes, that was, was it, uh, this, this current the July issue, I believe. Isn't that cool? I know, and it was in really great company. I mean, there's a really a bevy of fabulous books out this summer, and there's nothing like sharing them, and um, it must be a real treat, because you don't always know when it's going to come out in a magazine or something, right? No. I mean, until you sort of see it. Yeah, which is really kind of fun, because I know. It is. Yeah. It is. And right now I feel like I get disappointed if I don't see it, which is a horrible, <laughs> <laughs> a horrible spoiled thing to do. I should right? be grateful to everyone behind the scenes. I know it it is true because you can't sort of help it and that's the same idea I think of getting on Amazon or checking out the you know and all of those kinds of things because I think it's you know when it's kind of impossible not to pay attention to that but you know you sort of temper it but there's just nothing like celebrating a debut novel and I'm looking forward to more I'm very excited about the TV show development I'll be following that one closely and I wish you all the best and look forward to meeting you. It's The Windfall, Dick Shabas's debut novel, out today. Pick it up, enjoy it, and, and let us know how much you love it. Thank you so much, Diksha. Thank you, Robin. This is wonderful.